This video is made possible by KEH. Whether you're looking for the latest and greatest or vintage gear, KEH has the best inventory in the world with a 21 day return policy and a 180 day warranty. Use this link and code for 5% off or sell them your old gear and get an extra 5% with this link and code. Tony and I are going out. We want to explore and take some photos without our huge DSLRs. I'm going to be taking the X100V. Tony has some compact, more analog-like digital cameras he wants to bring, and we're going to see what that experience is like. I spent too much time looking at screens. I want a camera without a screen, an analog experience, but still with the power of interchangeable lenses. So I have the X-Pro3 and the Leica. M10D. Look, no screens. We're in Ivoryton, Connecticut, and we're just going to walk around and get some shots with our cameras. So light so easy. I initially bought a compact camera because I wanted something that was light and easy to carry around. And it is, but a benefit that I noticed is that it's disarming. People don't feel weird when I hold this camera up. They don't stop me, they don't talk about my camera as much. I just tend to blend in more than if I'm carrying my big DSLR with a huge lens. I do like that I can just leave it properly around my neck and not even over one shoulder and it's just comfortable. I net like it never causes stress on me, you know. So the X100V is a great compromise for me. It's a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor uh, and it takes better pictures than my iPhone. Not only that, because when I take it with me, I have it around my neck, it's just easier to grab and get a shot. Another reason why I like using this way better than my phone is that it's a comfortable tactile experience. Of course it feels good in the hand, but it's also got an aperture ring on the fixed lens so that you just choose your aperture by sliding it like this. Um, you can see you have everything else here too. You have your shutter speed, you have your exposure compensation dial, and your ISO all right here. You can either put it in automatic or shoot manually. And it has really nice filters. So nice that I tend to just shoot JPEG plus raw, but I generally just take all my JPEGs, load them onto my phone, and just share them as is. Okay, the feature that sold Tony on this camera is this little switch here, which changes the viewfinder from an electronic viewfinder to an optical viewfinder. He prefers the optical viewfinder. I'll have to let him talk about that. I like the electronic viewfinder. Look how much bigger, sharper, clearer that optical viewfinder is, and you can see around the picture that you framed. Chelsea's wrong, I'm right. <laughs> The X100V is $1,400, but you can get the previous model, the X100F, for about 800 views. And in fact, the one that got me to convert to this camera is at KEH right now, so you can get it there. KEH is sponsoring this video. They're the ones who introduced me to this camera and got me to get one. And you can go there and you can find the used camera of your dreams, not only for a great price, uh, but also with a great guarantee because you can send your camera back within 14 days if you don't like it for any reason. And then they also have a warranty period where you can set it, send it back if anything goes wrong. Use the link in our description to go to KEH and you can use the two coupon codes to either save 5% or get a 5% bonus towards your gear.
Another thing that I love about this camera is that I've been able to very easily transfer my photos directly to my phone. And I really have to be honest with you, I have never done this process on any camera where it's just 100% easy every time. There's always fiddling around. So I'd say each time I do this, it probably takes me like five minutes to get it connected, but it's still worth it. I still like it. I really like that it has the presets already built in. So it's like what you see is what you get. And I like it so much that I don't even edit. How is this tiny road have the biggest, loudest vehicles? I notice sometimes it takes a while for it to meter if it's suddenly brighter or darker. I, I think that we explored this little stretch, so let's go somewhere else and then Tony, you can uh, tell us all about your cameras, but I really think that mine's the best option. I think I'm gonna win, even though this isn't a competition. You always say that it's not a competition, that's what losers say. This is my X-Pro3. Oh man, seat's all pushed up. Or Y problems. I've been experimenting with the Artisans lenses that KEH sells and they're totally manual, fully analog. And I love it. They're also incredibly inexpensive. So you can get a whole set of them for the price of one Fuji lens. My favorite focal length though is around a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent. That's just the best walking around focal length, I think. Oh, you mean the focal length that's already on my fixed lens camera? Yes, that means that I could get those results with your lighter, less expensive camera. But I, I have the option to change focal lengths and sometimes that's what I want. Oh, that place is so cool. Are you, are you seeing this? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have to go back. Do you ever just go driving and take random pictures? Because that's my favorite thing to do. That's what we're doing right now. I don't really know where we're going, but we're going. There's a no trespassing sign, so. Oh, what? Maybe we'll get kicked out. Does someone live here? This is like Stonehenge or something. I started with the Seven Artisans 25 F1.8, $74 new at KEH to capture wide angles. I switched to the Seven Artisans 35 F1.2 to create background separation. It's crazy what you can do with a $145 lens that also feels professional. I have the power to go wide, to go tight. But most importantly, I have the power to get some background blur. So I think I'm gonna put on a nice portrait lens and see what we can do. This is my grandfather's old camera bag. This is the Seven Artisans 55 millimeter F1.4, which makes it a great portrait lens. I grabbed a couple snapshots of Chelsea and I'm blown away by the bokeh. Can you believe these portraits are from a $120 manual focus lens? Check out the rear screen on the X-Pro. It has an e-ink display that simulates my old habit in the film era of tearing off the box top and putting it on the back of the camera to remind you what film and ISO that you're using. It changes depending on what film simulation I have set in the camera. And that helps me not review my pictures because there's nothing there. Now, I don't think Fuji leaned far enough into this analog experience because you can flip the screen down. And here you have a proper digital screen where you could review your pictures and set your menu settings and that makes it a more versatile camera and it's enough to prevent me from chimping. I love the experience of manually focusing. You're not moving a focusing point around. You're watching the focus pull in and out. And I love to use manual focus only lenses. I like to have the option of autofocus removed because I could manually focus with an autofocus lens and I could manually shift my car with an automatic transmission, but I don't tend to do either because as a human, I tend to choose the easiest, most convenient path, but I want the gear to be a little limited to force me to engage in the situation. And that's what manual lenses do for me. There is a problem with the X-Pro3 for those of us manually focusing though. My favorite feature of the X-Pro3 
is the optical rangefinder style viewfinder because it shows you a wide angle of view and then draws in in lines the part of the picture that is actually going to be captured. And that gives you some peripheral vision that allows you to look around a little wider than your shot would be. And I found that that really helps me compose things by just giving me a little more extra vision. But with manual focus lenses like this, I cannot focus using the optical viewfinder. I have to switch to the electronic viewfinder. That's because this isn't a true rangefinder. It's like a digital simulation of a rangefinder. And if you don't mind using the electronic viewfinder, it works well. You can even use the optical viewfinder with a little window, but all of it is a little too electronic for me. So I do have another option, which goes full analog. This is the Leica M10D, and like other Leicas, it has a real rangefinder split prism display, which means I can manually focus accurately and never look at a screen. But unlike other Leicas, it does not have a rear screen. This is a digital camera, it captures digital files, but there's no displays at all. On the back, I just have a power switch that also goes to Wi-Fi if I want to transfer pictures to my phone, and exposure compensation. Everything about this is analog, except the pictures. Why am I so obsessed with getting rid of screens? I feel like I spend too much time looking at screens anyway. I'm always on my phone or computer or watching the TV and I, I want photography to be not screen time. I want to disconnect. I want to be more immersed into the experience and I really feel like that gives this to me. I'm totally into this less is more experience, but the problem with Leica is it's a lot more. <laughs> like this body used will run you about $6,000 from KEH and that's the best way to get it. They have a wide variety of different Leicas from the film and digital era. They're tested, they have a return policy, they have a warranty and you can use this coupon code to get 5% off. That's the best way to get them. They're collector's items. You can't just readily buy this camera. And then the lenses, this 35 millimeter lens is $6,000. There's an option though. KEH also sells the Seven Artisans and TT Artisan lenses. And those are significantly less expensive. And honestly, I don't see any difference in the usage. They look and feel like the Leica lenses and the results are very similar. The Leica is smaller and lighter, but judge for yourself whether it's worth 14 times the price. Let me swap it out. Check out this 50 millimeter F095. I think the Leica version of this is over $9,000. If I bought all Leica lenses, I'd be spending over 20K just on the lenses. These third party lenses will cost me less than $2,000 at KEH. Check out the aperture. I hate manually focusing with modern cameras and lenses because it's just slow and inaccurate and frustrating. But with the Leica, it was fast, accurate, and most importantly, fun. Shooting wide open at F095 created this thick bokeh and heavy vignetting that gave me a 3D effect. When I wanted sharper, more realistic images, all I had to do was shut the aperture down. The 50 was my favorite, but the 75 f1.2 was similar. Shoot wide open for soft and surreal or shut down for sharp and realistic. If you find yourself losing a little bit of the passion for photography, it could be that you've achieved technical perfection, but forgotten how to enjoy the process of taking pictures. Cameras like these will bring you back there and KEH is the best place to get it. So use this link and this coupon code, but you could also put a vintage lens on one of your modern mirrorless cameras using an adapter. Just about any DSLR lens can be adapted to almost any mirrorless camera. And of course, KEH has the best selection in the world of these vintage lenses. Check it out. In the comments down below, I'd like to hear your own experiences. Like how did you bring the passion and joy back into the process of taking pictures? How did you forget chasing technical perfection to go back to capturing mood and feeling? Because that's what these cameras have brought to me. And I really love it. Thanks so much.